fundamentals. So with increasing thermal maturity, or as the basin subsides, the formation gets buried. They get exposed to elevated heat, which essentially converts the preserved, insolubilized biomass into kerogen. This happens until a depth, or paleo depth, of about 2 kilometers, or 60 degrees Celsius, and a vitronite reflectance of about 0.4 to 0.5. What is vitronite reflectance? Let me define vitronite first. So vitronite is a macerol which is found in kerogen, and its reflectance under optical microscope is studied to determine the degree of maturity of organic matter. The reflectance generally increases with increasing maturity. Now, as the rock continues to be buried with increasing vitronite reflectance, the kerogen begins to crack, primarily into bitumen and some hydrocarbons. Bitumen further cracks into hydrocarbons. There are actually experimental studies that have shown that kerogen yields less than 35% of hydrocarbons, whereas bitumen cracking yields remainder of the hydrocarbons. So generally at about 0.6 vitronite reflectance is peak oil generation begins. About 1 is the wet gas and about 1.3 is the peak dry gas. Going back to bitumen, like you can see, its generation starts at about 0.4 and continues to late into wet gas window. This exactly is the source of Boone and Bain in shale oil plays, to some extent. Hackley and Cardart in their publication have shown that bitumen are voluminous portion of organic matter in mature shales. Here are pre and post solvent extraction S1 values for Barnett shale sample at about 1 RO. Removal of most of the volume, as you can see, for the soluble solid bitumen in post solvent extracted value confirms its significant proportion. Here is Hackley and Cardot's conceptual model showing that dominant organic matter occurring in thermal mature shales at about 0.9, 1.1 RO is solid bitumen. There is vitronite and other macerals and solid hydrocarbons, but they are very small in proportion in comparisons.